electric motor, synthetic rigging, classic sailboat, no electronics, crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. It's a beautiful day, and we have a broken hatch and dead batteries. So Herbie's been troubleshooting batteries and electronics and chargers this morning because it's very important that when we get to Suriname, we have complete charge for our motor because we're gonna be needing to motor against a current into this river. Meanwhile, the house bank is keeping all of our food fresh. So it's very important that we figure this out. Unfortunately, we're having issues with regen with, that we have never had before. And it's really a big difference. We have really relied on the hydro generator in almost all of our past long passages. It's been amazing. So the fact that it's not working right now is concerning. So in the past, it was just, we just used the motor whatever we needed and then turned on regen and forgot about it. The solar panels fed the house bank, everything was fine, and as the prop spun, it just made power. And if the prop wasn't spinning fast enough, it didn't really draw much power. But now, for whatever reason, if we're not going fast enough to produce power, it's drawing about half an amp all the time. And that means that last night we were going fast for a bit, so we had power. And then when we slowed down, we were consuming power. So we ended up with about the same amount of power as we did before we like before sunset. So it's really frustrating. So now we have one panel set to the motor bank, which means that we only have half the solar power for the fridge. So I'm trying to get the generator on the battery chargers, but it's so stinking hot that the battery chargers are just overheating. So I'm like trying to babysit them to get them to run. So we got the battery charger to stay on for the motor bank. So it charged up the motor bank completely. And now the motor bank is full. So now we are using the DC to DC converter to siphon power from the motor bank over to the house bank. So the motor bank charger cranks out about 25 amps and the converter puts out about 20 amps. And then with the solar panels, we're putting in close to 30 amps of power into the house bank. So it's gonna take a while because they're like very low. We're gonna get them all charged up and just everything back up to tip top. So this is our DC to DC converter. So it takes the 48 volt motor bank and steps it down to 12 volt. And you can see it's putting out a steady 20 amps. So with that generator's just been on for hours and it's gonna be on for hours. Uh, pretty much you're just listening to it. When you hear the generator kind of like runs a little more easily, it's not, you know, the, the loud rumble of a generator that's under load. Then we just check the powers and then lo and behold, batteries are full. It's charging faster than it's siphoning. So that way we will not hurt the motor bank. The motor bank will stay full charge. We are just adding power to the house bank. So we're running the fridge at full blast, to chill that sucker down and charging up all the house batteries. Okay, it's noon. So I did our noon site and I believe that we are here. Now yesterday's noon site had us a wee bit way west actually further west than we are today so by dead reckoning we come out to be around here and we are about 410 miles roughly from this point which is our approach point to south america and Suriname's right here so we're like getting close so by my calculations we are seven degrees 48 minutes north and 43 degrees west Okay, things are looking nice out there. The winds have calmed down a lot. There are very few white caps left. These are conditions that we haven't seen in days, like weeks. 
So I'm excited. We're actually going to do a sail change here. I'm going to get up Josh, our jib, and a drop stand so he doesn't steal Josh's wind. So then we'll be sailing under PJ, our trisail, and Josh, the jib. Since it's downwind, that'll be ideal. So today resolved a lot of problems that we were having. So our big issue was the fact that we didn't have enough electricity to run everything. And last time we tried running the generator, both battery chargers were just overheating and neither would work, which means nothing came of it. So we just shut it down and then we're like, just try again later. So we tried today, the house battery charger wouldn't run, it kept overheating, but the motor bank charger did run. So we were able to charge up the motor bank tippy top and then use the converter to then siphon power over to the house bank and get all our batteries full charged. So now the fridge can just stay on and we don't have to worry about lights and like, like we're good again. So that's a huge, huge relief. So the size of our battery banks, our house bank is about 500 amp hours at 12 volts. And our motor bank is 200 amp hours at 48 volts. Or if you step it down to 12 volts, 800 amp hours at 12 volt. So it's, there's a lot of amps here. So normally we can go about two weeks without charging with just the general lights and stuff, not the fridge. The fridge just chugs the juice, especially when it's really hot. So that's, that was a huge headache solved and felt so good. And then the weather got better and the skies cleared up. The clouds looked a lot less ominous. So we put up our head sail and we got set up for a good downwind sail plan. Now, a lot of people put up their main when they want to go fast, but the problem is you don't put up sails just to put them up. You put them up based on where do you want to go. If you're trying to go downwind, you want to put all your sails forward of the mast. That way they pull the boat. Because the big problem that happens is, say you go full sail and you're just heading dead downwind. That main is just you know hanging out like this huge lever arm next to the boat because you have it eased out all the way. So now wind hits it and it's trying to like torque the boat around. So then you're fighting it with the rudder and just, it's not good. If you take the main out of the equation and it's just a big head sail, the boat's being pulled. So that's it. There's really no steering. It's just going because the sails are, the sails are steering everything. So then when you have following seas pushing the boat's stern around, you don't worry about broaching because 
the sails are taking you and there's no way that a little wave turning the boat just a little bit is gonna make the sails change. So that's why today when we raised more sail, we just raised our big jib. We did not do anything with the main. We actually kept our trysail up, even though the winds are light. That way, it's a little bitty sail there and then a big sail forward to just pull us downwind. Now, if we were trying to go upwind or something like that, yeah, you put up more main, you put up more sails, and you try and get the sails more aft of the mast. So that's where like a big Genoa, something that overlaps and just comes behind the mast, that's excellent, because then you're going to have a lot of power pushing the boat upwind. So it's, you gotta figure out where do I wanna go, which direction is the wind, and how can I set the sails in a way that it involves like the least amount of input on my part. So. With the big head sail and a tiny little trysail behind the mast, the wind vane can just steer with like no weight at all on the helm and it's just like guiding us. And we actually haven't touched the helm, I think like two weeks now. The wind steering does it all because we just set the sails which will carry us the way we wanna go. And then the wind steering just like fine tunes the course to keep it perfect. So all in all, I'd say this was one of our better days at sea on this passage. Now it's time to go to sleep. So, electricity kind of sucks for us right now, but our water situation is doing great. We, yeah. one could even say, we are be calmed. <laughs> if you're wondering, how do we get our trysail up so quickly? Where do we keep it when it's not in use? Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. I can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.